fifth graders. Uh, so today we're going to continue our studies of the conquest of Africa. All right, so your note styles for today, what I would like you to do um, to practice is trying to track events, all right? So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the first event, all right? So there'll be a one on your paper, there's a one, all right? And then underneath that is a two, three, and so on and so forth down to number eight. Okay, so within this, we're going to be talking about eight different events um, that influenced uh, Africa during the European conquest. All right, so we're going to talk about those eight points today. So, follow along. Here we go. All right, um, so the first thing we need to understand about is the size of Europe. Okay, so if we look at Europe, uh, on this map it looks very large, but if we looked at a world map, Europe is quite small. And by looking at this, we, we see that the um, the area to which they could be able to farm uh, is not great. It's what is located uh, in the green area. All right, so green, so where this deciduous forest and mixed forest are, um, these are really areas where they farm. Okay, so they leveled all the trees and farm. Notice, while it looks to be like a lot of land, it's it's really not. And eventually, it will get to the point where it cannot handle. Um, in tip progressives. It will not be able to handle the number of people who live within Europe to help support them. All right, So they have to go and find someplace else. And we know from our past studies that they've gone and colonized all parts of different areas of the world except for one. And that one part would be Africa. All right, So here you notes. Pause it. Um, after you're done pausing and writing, uh, pay attention. All right, So one of the earliest sea traders were, were the Portuguese, and they went and explored and sailed all the way around Africa to the west coast, um, down to the west coast, right? What this does is it's, it allows for them to create trade, all right? And they wanted to create these relations uh, so that they could help, uh, you know, get more money, strengthen their empire, and so on and so forth, okay? They're, they're out looking for more money, more glory, more gold. It's kind of like what... Um, the Spanish war, but just in a different way, all right? Um, so other European nations see what the Portuguese are doing, and they, then they start to do the same thing, following up in these trade posts, all right? They're looking for, again, more ways to make more revenue. And so they eventually um, settle in North and South America, and or this, so the previous settlements of North and South America need workers, okay? The Indians aren't working. Uh, it's too expensive to hire more Europeans, so why not go and get enslaved Africans, okay? And so with this, we create the slave trade, all right? And this makes Europeans rich because, you know, for three or four hundred bucks, you could buy uh, a slave. They could work for you for 10, 15, 20 years, um, and whatever they help to produce, that's, you're making pure profit off of that, all right? After, um, after a year or so, a slave is pretty much paid for himself, okay? And so we get this really bad um, scar in our in our history of of the slave trade and it all starts with European um, businessmen if you want to call them that uh, or European explorers going setting up these trading posts looking for people to work on uh, the plantations of North and South America all right we look at this map so everything that was set up was this uh, triangle trade route all right and what it does is in Europe, okay, what they are sending, and they are mainly just sending manufactured goods all right, to the Americas, in return selling it because they are getting the oil, the furs, the iron, the lumber, the ginger, they basically get everything they possibly could need to make a finished product, all right, and then they finish it in Europe. In Africa, basically what Africa is, is sending them are just the slaves, okay, and so Africa is providing the labor force, Europe is providing the finished good, and the American colonies of North and South America are providing the raw products. And this is how this uh, triangle trade route is established and um, is, is around for quite a long time. Okay. Alright, so here are the last few for your notes. Please pause. 
the the Europeans, um, the way they got this, the way that they created the triangle trade route is because they wanted to build their empire. And so they were looking for inferior, um, what they considered inferior people, all right? Um, the Africans did everything they possibly could to resist, but as we know from African uh, civilizations, uh, they weren't as technolo technologically advanced as, uh, say, the Europeans were, okay? And so um, the Europeans were able to come in with their modern weapons and pretty much own the Africans uh, at their own will, all right? Uh, and this kind of all leads to the last part where um, almost all of Africa is colonized by 1914. Uh, which is going to cause long-lasting problems. And we'll look at some of those more. You can do some more research. Uh, we'll have our guest speaker come in um, to look at this some more. But it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really impact Africa to the point where it's going to look like a rainbow. And what I mean by that is this. So here is Africa in 1914, all right, after it's been colonized and divided up. So you can see the, excuse me, the, the key represents the different European nations that colonized it, and it's it's it is very very colorful. It's very diverse. It's going to set up a lot of problems. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to bring them with you in the class, and that's what we'll start with. Talk to you later. Bye.